Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1 PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Today we will be studying surveys. Last time we discussed observations, it's two types, naturalistic observation and laboratory observation, and then we discussed case studies both in English and Urdu. Today we will be discussing surveys. So let's start with the surveys. Sometimes what psychologists want to know uh, about is pretty personal. The only way to find out about a very private behavior is to ask questions. So in survey methods, researchers will ask a series of questions about the topic they are studying. Survey can be conducted in person in the form of interviews or on the telephone, the internet or with a questionnaire. The questions in interviews or on the telephone can vary, but usually the questions in a survey are a are all the same for everyone answering the survey. In this way, researchers can ask lots of questions and survey literally hundreds of people. That is the big advantage of survey, aside from their ability to get a private information, researchers can get a tremendous amount of data on a very large group. Of course, there are disadvantages. One disadvantage is researchers, researchers have to be very careful about the group of people they survey. If they want to know about the college freshmen, think about politics. For example, they can't really ask every single college freshman in the entire United States. But they can select random sample from the group. They could randomly select a certain number of college freshmen from several different colleges across the United States. Random or you can say representative sample is actually a randomly selected sample of subjects from a larger population of subjects. So because the sample has to be representative of the pop population, uh, which is the entire group in which the researchers is interested, researchers are interested. So if researchers selected only freshmen from one single school, for example, they would certainly get different opinion on politics than they might get from a small community colleges. But if they take a lot of colleges and select their, their participants, participants like people who are part of the study, study. so if they select uh, their participants from lots of colleges randomly, they will be more certain of getting answers that a broad selection of college students would typically give. So that bring, uh, brings up uh, the other major disadvantage of the survey technique people aren't always going to give researchers accurate answers. The fact is people tend to misremember things, distort the truth and may lie outright, even if the survey is an anonymous question. Remembering is not accurate process sometimes, especially people think that they might not come off sounding very desirable, socially appropriate. So some people deliberately give the answers that think is more socially correct rather than their true opinion so that no one gets offended in a process called courtesy bias. Researchers much must take their surveys result with a big grain of salt. They may not be as accurate as they would like them to be. Both the wording of survey questions and the order in which they appear on the survey can affect the outcome. It is difficult to find a wording that will be understood in exactly the same way by all those who read the questions. For example, questions can be worded in such a way that the desired answers becomes obvious, often resulting in courtesy bias type answers. So a question that appears at the end of the survey might be answered quite differently than if it had appeared at the beginning. So this was the end of the video. If you got your point, if your concept is clear, you like the video, don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe our channel to get notification of the upcoming videos. And don't forget to share the video because sharing is caring. Until then, Allah Hafiz.